Why should the input impedance of an amplifier be high? This question comes from Stephen from Everett, Washington. Why must the input impedance of the speaker headphones be higher than the amp's output? Forgive me for being ignorant of electrical theory. That's okay. 99% of the people that watch this series uh, are struggling to try and understand that, and that's why we're here. So don't, don't apologize for that. Uh, but impedance is measured in ohms of resistance, I think. Yes, that is correct. Current voltage is supposed to follow the path of least resistance. The higher resistance would appear as the greater impedance of the input of the speakers and the headphones. So I've never understood this. Now we, we tried to cover that, and I think I did poorly last time. So we're going to give another stab at it. We'll give another stab at it. Um, I, I, I just trust that the, the engineering nerds out there that actually understand this <coughs> um, forgive me for some of the, the information I'm about to give that is, is not um, going to be to your liking. But I'm going to try one more time. So he's correct, right? Impedance, ohms, resistance is in fact and Th it's, it's an impediment, oh, I like that. It's an impediment to current flow. So I've got a wire here. Now this wire has very low resistance. There's almost no impediment to signal. If you, if, you, if you plug this thing in, we can plug it in, there you plug it in. Now what's coming out of here and through this wire uh, it's just, it's almost zero ohms, no impediment. If I place a resistor in here, I am going to impede the, the signal, right? I'm going to make it harder for the signal to get through. So the higher the resistance in this wire, in this example of connecting two things together, is going to be the opposite of what we want. We want low impedance. So here's where it gets tricky. This is connecting two pieces of gear together. This is where you don't want impedance, right? But when you are at the input of a piece of gear, so we're feeding in to here, and this is our input, and this, the other side of this wire, is going to ground because remember, just look at an RCA jack. You have ground and hot, or an XLR, but whatever you want. You have ground and hot. So we input on the hot lead, and the signal travels through the circuit to ground. So now we're doing something different. Instead of this connecting A to B, we're connecting B to C and C being ground down here. Now here, if, if, if what, we, what we don't want is ground. Ground is sh a short, right? If you take the output of your amplifier, right here, and plug that sucker back in, see if I can get the thing right. Can, I, can he do it twice? Nope, of course not, of course not. If I take this and I plug that in to ground, the output of this is gonna <laughs> gone, shorted, right? nothing good. I have to pull it off of ground with a resistor to then let the signal flow through here and into my amplifier. Okay? Does that sort of make sense? So I want a low impedance here to drive this signal and, it want, and when it goes here it's eventually going to go into the thing and then somehow get to ground. Where it goes at the input to ground, we want that as high as possible so it's easy for this zero ohm wire to feed into this high resistance. Low resistance feeds high resistance, but not high resistance in the wire. High resistance in the input to ground. So I think I did better on that one. Let me know. <laughs> Hopefully it makes sense. Low output impedance, high input impedance, zero low impedance in the wire feeding it itself. Okay, did my best. 
Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.